Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, The Game Changer, Climbing the Cultural Continuum. We appreciate your taking time out of your busy day to attend this session. Our webinar is brought to you by the Kaleidoscope Group. My name is Barbara Sanner and I'll be your moderator today. Before we start, we wanted to let you know how to submit a question. Simply type into the questions box of your GoToWebinar control panel where it says enter a question for staff and click send. We will ask your question to the presenters today at several points throughout the session. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can, but we probably can't answer all of them today, so if we don't get to yours, we'll follow up with you via email. Also, we hope that you'll take a few minutes to complete the survey at the end of the webinar. When you exit the session, the survey will appear in your browser window and should take less than three minutes to complete. Your feedback is very important to us, so thank you in advance for doing that. Now I'd like to introduce Kevin Murphy, Junior Consultant for the Kaleidoscope Group, who will be fielding questions today and asking them to our presenters, who are Cherie Neighbor and Orlando Bishop. And now I'd like to introduce the Kaleidoscope Group to you which is a full-service diversity and inclusion consulting firm founded by B. Young in the 1990s. It is headquartered in Chicago, Illinois, and has a national presence and global reach. The organization is led by Doug Harris, CEO, and a nationally recognized <coughs> DNI thought leader, speaker, and consultant. The Kaleidoscope Group is a certified minority-owned business enterprise and is recognized as one of the top 10 pioneers in the diversity and inclusion industry. The organization's goal is to engage real people to have real conversations about real issues to create real change. And now I'll turn it over to Cherie to get us started. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, let me just highlight that we are excited to be here today and uh, excited to have clients not only in the greater Chicago area but across the US those who do business both nationally as well as globally and I'm excited to be here with you today as one of your thought leaders and what a great topic the game changer climbing the cultural continuum and it's a topic that's especially important to me as I reflect on the fact that I often say I'm working in my occupation. As an executive consultant who works with individuals and organizations, positioning them to win in the marketplace. And I've had the good fortune to see the power of cultural competence as a competitive differentiator in my roles at McDonald's Corporation and Granger. And I'm happy today to have as my partner the dynamic Orlando. Orlando, would you introduce yourself? Yes, good morning to everyone. I'm, I'm excited as well. Uh, one of the things about me that I'll share right away is that I, I enjoy coaching, uh, not only in terms of sports coaching, which I do with youth and my own kids for flag football and basketball and so on, but also uh, coaching executives and entrepreneurs in terms of their own strategies. So when we came to this idea of the game changer, it was definitely a, a framework that works for me in terms of thinking about competition in that way. And I'll just go ahead and say that if I get a little too carried away, I am a sports fanatic, so if I get too carried away with these analogies and, and, and metaphors that take us into the sports world, uh, please excuse me. Also, please feel free to nudge me and reel me back in. Um, but I think that there's a lot here for us to learn in a really powerful way for us to think about the importance of cultural competence to organizational success. So, so Orlando, mm -hmm. what a great sports background you have. And I'm really excited because I've had the benefit of experiencing your coaching. So I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. But I have to tell you, while I might enjoy a good basketball game, I'm probably not a super sports fanatic. But one thing I do recognize and believe is that the principles of a winning team are also applicable in business. So whether we're talking about an HR team or an operations team or an executive team, it's important that they have different skills, experiences, perspectives, and that they have great coaches. 
coaches who can bring them together in a combined and complementary way to achieve the win. We're at a pivotal time in history and companies are expanding their growth. It's national as well as global as we think about the global footprint. They're playing in fields that are very dynamic, influenced by both external factors, whether we're talking about the economy, the political dynamics, social justice issues, and at the same time, they're influenced by internal factors. Employee retention, how do I attract and retain best talent? Developing talent in a way that they can significantly contribute to the business. High productivity, and how do we stay customer centric and deliver those superior products and services? And all the while, they've got to keep their eye on the competition. And the competition is stiff, whether that's the local company or major organizations, they're all competing for the prize. Now, great leaders, Orlando, and successful organizations plan to win. It's not an accident or an incident. And they're going to focus their attention across the lines. They absolutely understand the role of their, their roles in successfully navigating this competitive landscape. It's about bringing their cultural competence, their ability to really unlock the unique perspectives, the skills, the backgrounds of what I say is their only appreciating asset, and that's their talent. And if they're able to do that well, they achieve competitive advantage. So as I talk with executives about cultural competence and diversity and inclusion, it really boils down to this. It's about making dollars and cents. And so when we think about that top line, it's not just about maintaining the position in the market, it's growing market share. It's understanding not only today's market, but what's happening in that emerging market. Who's going to be their customer, their client for the future? And then focusing on a robust pipeline, having the right people, in the right places, at the right time. People who can literally and figuratively speak the language of the customer. And when that happens, every day, people are bringing their personal best in order to deliver those quality products and services to not only meet the customer's desires, but to exceed them. And they do that in very cost-effective ways. Now we recognize that companies may be focused on any one of these lines at any given time. Organizations, when they're really savvy in this space, uh, cultural competence is a part of the DNA. Uh, it's, it's in that place where they've made the, the linkages, they see the importance of it, they've gotten to really intentional. And in fact, it's about everyone in the organization having the ability to climb that cultural continuum. It's having the right kind of dexterity, if you will, uh, to unlock the potential that each individual player can contribute, uh, not only to the team's success, but ultimately to achieve that organization's success. So I would say, really, it's the competitive differentiator. So let's let's talk let's talk a bit about that. We have two quotes here from uh, sort of American uh, sports icons, sports legends, around teamwork and the importance of teams. And I won't uh, as as uh, as athletes get older, the the stories get grander. So I'll try to I'll try to keep the story I'm about to share within the realm of reality for for everybody. But I did play high school football, and at my senior homecoming, I played defensive end, and I, I, you can't see quickly, you can't see wide receivers, certain player that's on the offense, you can't see what they're doing from my position. So it's the job of one of my teammates, the cornerback, to let me know if that player is coming in my direction. And it just so happened that, uh, that, that particular, on that particular day, on that particular play, I'm moving out toward the sideline, and suddenly... I'm looking at the running back, and, and, and suddenly the next thing I see is the sky. 
and it's my it's uh, my coach looking down at me as well as the team doctor. And what happened was that wide receiver came in and blocked me and hit a, put such a great block on me that they knocked me out cold. Uh, the story is not just that I got knocked out cold, but that it was the job of the cornerback to let me know that that block was coming so that I could prepare myself. And because the cornerback didn't let me know, I ended up staring at the sky and my coach and the doctor. Where in our organizations are we seeing ourselves getting blindsided? Is it the sales team that isn't in sync with what marketing is putting out into the world? Is it IT not understanding the technological uh, tools that would best serve the organization in terms of the mission and people in doing their jobs? Is it the HR team that doesn't necessarily fully understand uh, some of the, 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 the characteristics that would best serve in a, in a position that's needing to be filled? Where are we being blindsided? And how can we do a better job of making sure, one, that we are communicating necessary information? As much as I love the guy who played cornerback, I really wish he would have remembered to tell me that that block was coming. And also making sure that I am listening that I am listening out because it does no good for him to yell that that wide receiver is coming if in fact I'm just playing and not able to hear his voice. So we want to get clear on that so that our organizations don't get blindsided, so that we don't roll out a sales, that we don't roll out a marketing campaign that's not in sync with the market we're trying to reach. Uh, and, and that all comes again from this place of cultural competence where we're listening, where we're hearing, where we're expanding our understanding um, through taking in information and starting to think about the critical commonalities and differences that are at play as we design our communications and move forward with our strategies. Um, so Sheree, as, as, as we talk about that, I, I'm going to hand it to you to talk a little bit about what that really means in terms of teams in the business place when we're doing this work effectively and we have these diverse teams working at their best. Great. And the first thing I want to say is, wow, Orlando, we're very happy that the coach and uh, the doctors were on their jobs, right? <laughs> well, thank, well, thank you. Yeah, some, some, yeah. Some would argue that me being knocked out that way explains a lot about my life since then. But <laughs> we, we won't get into all of that today. We won't get into all, all of right. that. All right. All right. You know, what's really interesting to me is the whole focus on being proactive and being intentional. And sometimes when we think about teams and we think about homogenous teams, sometimes, quite honestly, Orlando, it just seems like it's easier. It's less intent. You know, we, we know each other. We operate alike. And we don't have the same kind of conflict that might happen when we have those more diverse or, or heterogeneous teams. And in fact, in the short term, we could experience you know, higher performance. But the reality is the more diverse the team, and lots of studies have been done, over the long term, the greater the results. And so now what's interesting to me about this is we've had this tendency to really focus on diversity and we think about it in terms of just race and gender. And when we see those visible characteristics, we know that there's likely going to be some differences of opinion. And it takes us to a place of saying, oh, differences of opinion, that could mean conflict. Oh my gosh, we're going to be in this storming place. But what's really interesting is that that visual cue also enhances the team's ability to handle the conflict because members expect it. They're not surprised when it surfaces, and they learn how to effectively take that conflict and turn it into creative energy and some creative insights. And so when we think about diverse teams performing, uh, we're talking about getting into that place of, uh, we sometimes say peeling the onion to really understand the experiences, the attributes, the talents of every player, and bringing that to the forefront as an asset for an organization. 
Now, what we want to do as in, in, in doing that, the tool, the tool again there is, is cultural competence. We want to move from that X that we see there on the graph. And as you say, in the short term, those homogenous teams can outperform. What we want to do is move as quickly as we can along that purple line, our diverse team's performance, to that place where the lines cross, getting from that X to where the lines cross. And the key to doing that, as you're pointing out, as you're pointing out, doing that efficiently and effectively is cultural competence. Getting that understanding of what we all value on the team, what some of our talents, approaches, experiences might be that we're bringing to the table so that we can work in that more effective way. And I'm reminded of a story, actually someone who uh, trained me in terms of IDI, which we'll talk about a little bit later, shared this story uh, with me where he was, he, he is black and he was in a meeting with mostly uh, white colleagues and he was talking about this racial issue that had come up and he was becoming very animated and talking about it and how serious it was to him and he looked around the room, he recalled, he looked around the room and he saw that everyone in the room around him was being quite stoic and he just took that to mean that they, they just didn't really care certainly not the way he cared about this issue. And it was only later as he started to think about it in terms of these issues of cultural, um, cultural competence and thinking about what we bring to the table culturally that it struck him that he was coming from a place and from a culture personally where emotional expression is valued. And so he was expressing the importance of this with his vehemence and with all that energy. Whereas he was speaking to a room full of people wh who were coming from a cultural place where emotional control is valued. And so there's this miss where he speaks to a colleague later and they're saying just how important they thought that this issue was, but he was misreading what he was seeing in the room. And as we develop our cultural competence, what we're able to do is start to appreciate that things might look different coming from different people caring about family, caring about career, caring about the organization, caring about the community might look different coming from different people. As we're able to do that, then we're able to communicate more effectively, take in the cues we're getting more effectively, and again, perform at a higher level because our, our communication, our work, our understanding of one another is at a higher level. So just want to share that example. But the key is to figure out how do we get those lines to cross as quickly as possible and get that diverse team performing at the highest level possible immediately. Absolutely, absolutely. And so let's spend a little bit of time and talk about really what cultural competence has to do with that. We, we keep saying it's all about the cultural competence and it's, it can be the differentiator. In fact, it can be the game changer. And in this whole space of DNI and the journey that organizations and individuals have been on, uh, we very often have talked about diversity, right? We've heard the word, uh, we think about the importance of having a diverse workforce. We've even expanded our thinking, so we're moving beyond those personal characteristics of race and gender to be really reflective of the multiple dimensions, the mosaic, if you will, of diversity. And as much as I'd like to believe that every organization has embraced the notion of diversity, I also know that there are those who still think diversity is about counting heads. While others have moved to this place, evolved their thinking, their strategies, they're committed to building the kind of culture that's not just about counting heads, instead it's about making heads count. Now, one of our clients framed inclusion well during an executive discussion that was taking place. Uh, it was during the college basketball March Madness, and the executives were talking about the big dance and all of the college uh, teams that had been invited to the big dance. And she took that opportunity to say, you know, when I think about inclusion, it's one thing to be invited to the dance. It's quite another when you invite me to dance. And all of a sudden, the light bulb went off for the executives. And they got into this really dynamic conversation that led them to the place of saying, really, what's cultural competence got to do with it? Everything. Because see, in order to do the dance, 
you first have to have the right dancing shoes, so those resources, and then you have to know how to dance the right dance. And so as we think about that, there's a playbook. And it starts with our ability to be in that place of think. And it's here that we're listening. And I often say this is about active listening. It's not listening to see how I'm going to respond, but listening to ensure that I've created some new understanding and that I'm actually doing my own check and adjust and beginning to expand my thoughts. And then it's about how I take this and get into that reflective place and begin to do my own assessment thinking about my biases, and we certainly all have them, how do I understand not only my biases that are visible to me, but what about those unconscious biases? And how do they influence how I think and ultimately what my behaviors are? And the goal is to begin then to make the appropriate and authentic behavioral changes that allows me to show up for others in inclusive ways. So as we move uh, forward, I did want to ask Sharia, as you're moving to this next slide, yes, there we go, where we are in terms of the levels of this work being done and sort of the, op the order of operations, how people can be thinking about cultural competence being developed so that we get to some of the outcomes that we've been highlighting. And so Orlando, I'm, I'm thinking about those three levels. And in fact, it really is a three-tiered model. So at the individual level, it's my opportunity to say, how do I every day bring my A game? You know, how do I exceed what was my personal best yesterday? Because I'm really focused on building my own individual competence. But at the same time, how am I showing up as a team member? And in this place where we're talking about high performance teams, we're talking about teams where everyone is not only understanding but recognizing and valuing the differences. We're talking about building the right muscles from both the individual standpoint and the team standpoint so that we can operate effectively across points of difference. And when we do that well, we've uniquely positioned our organization in terms of our ability to win in the competitive marketplace. And so when we think about cultural competence, we're talking about it at that three-tiered model. And so what does that mean as it relates to climbing the continuum? And when we're in the space of climbing the continuum, I, I always like to think about, you know, where am I now and what's the prize? You know, where am I headed? And on the continuum, there's a place where I may have limited experience and limited exposure to points of difference. And so when I think about my own cultural competence, I'm in a place, quite honestly, where I simply don't know what I don't know. As I continue to learn and grow, though, I'm now in a place where I'm developing my own lens, my own filters, based on my own experiences and exposure. As I continue on that continuum, I now have the ability to meet people where they are. I call that meeting in the middle where I can establish some common ground. I can connect around familiar, around the similar. It's in that place that I want to make sure I'm treating everyone and everyone is treating me with dignity and respect. But as we continue to climb, I'm now getting much more comfortable and I can be in that place of really beginning to ask the right questions, to go beneath the waterline, to appreciate where someone else's perspective is. I can uniquely honor who I am while at the same time honoring who they are. And then ultimately, it's about leveraging those differences. It's about taking them into a place where they become an asset, where each one of us has the opportunity to grow 
to experience new and to achieve great success. So the interesting thing is, I, I sometimes say it's our opportunity to continue to build our cultural competence as we grow, go along the continuum. And the interesting thing is the higher we climb, the more profoundly we can impact our organization's top line, pipeline, and bottom line. Now, there's an old adage, and it says, if it is to be, it's up to me. And so that would suggest that there's a responsibility for each of us at that individual level. So when I think about you know, cultural competence, there's a number of words that just kind of pop for me. And uh, as much as I love the fact that we can say it, it makes a competitive difference, uh, I also recognize that it's a journey. And cultural competence is about the journey. But I was uh, in a session not too long ago, and there was an example that came up. And we were talking about being keenly aware of differences. And the example focused on three young men who were watching a baseball game. And they were all different heights. And they were watching the game over the fence. And interestingly enough, one of the young men had great view of the game because he was much taller than the fence. And one had fair view because he was at the fence level. But then there was another young man who couldn't quite see the game because he was shorter than the fence. And someone had the idea and said, you know what, why don't we put some blocks up here? And so they didn't do a block for the, the young man who could see the game clearly. They did add a block for the young man who was just at eye level. And they added a couple of blocks for the young man who was much shorter. And while we thought that was a pretty good solution, an interesting comment came from the team. And they said, what would happen if we simply just eliminated the fence? That's that whole recognition of saying, wow, different solutions and, and being open, right? A absolutely, and that's exactly where I was going, that, that that openness, that ability to, it takes sometimes new eyes see new things, that kind of thing. It takes that ability to be open to the idea, well, there's always been a fence there, being open to the idea that just because I see things a certain way doesn't mean that's the only way they can be seen. Certainly doesn't mean that that's absolutely how it is. And so maybe there's, maybe that, that fence could be removed. And being open to that possibility or even moving beyond that particular suggestion to thinking about what else that might look like is how we get to the high performance that's there and the competitive advantage and the rich ideas. That openness to the question at the very least of what if we just remove the fence. So just wanted to, to, to highlight that point around it. This the, this reframe, I wanted to, to, to highlight that we sort of roll this work up and, and, and we, there's a momentum that's built. So we move from that personal best, some of what we're talking about, that self-awareness, what's my history, how have I come to this place, what are the things I've prioritized in our continuous development, and we're able to bring that to the team where we build together and are able to share information just in time. Maybe that, in, maybe that question, the equivalent of what if we move the fence, comes to me right as we're about to make a presentation, as we're preparing a presentation. And we want to be open to those things. So we're able to bring our full selves to the team and then ultimately align our teams, align individuals on the organizational level so that we're able to the things that are listed there as well. So we. Each of those pieces is, in, is incredibly important, and it's actually not possible to maximize what we're talking about on the organizational level in terms of addressing today's realities or even preparing for tomorrow's possibilities if we haven't done the foundational work on the individual level. And so as we engage, and we'll talk a little bit about this more specifically as we wind down, as we engage, we want to make sure that we're addressing each of these levels in terms of cultural competence. Uh, moving to the, the, the next slide, there's this quote here that we wanted to share, you were born to be a, a game changer, a change catalyst. And what I would say to everyone on the call and to anyone we engage around these issues is, you are making a difference in your organization. 
the question th that needs to be asked is what type of difference are you making? And as we look at the type of difference that we're making, and you can go to the next slide, we want to talk about this particular phrase. And it's something that, I was, that was said to me when I was an athlete, and I say it now as a, as a coach, which is that players are made in the offseason, teams are made in season. If you think back to what we saw in that last slide, what is the work that we're going to do in preparation for those in-season moments? Because when our sales team is headed out into that new market, it's too late to develop the cultural competence. They need to take that cultural competence into that market. When our HR executive sits down to conduct that interview, it's too late to develop the cultural competence. We need to have had that in place before that conversation starts. So what are the things we're going to do individually? How do we do that work individually, commit to that work individually, so that we, at, on game day, are able to have the greatest impact uh, possible? And, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm hoping that I, I haven't ventured into that going too far with the sports analogy space, but we really want to make sure of that in thinking about where we might be blindsided and make sure that we develop ourselves to be able to help our teammates and not have those blindsiding moments occur. As a matter of fact, make sure that we're performing at the highest level. And so one of the questions that I got was, how long does the cultural competence development process actually take? So we've talked about some good things relative to this process, but is there any sort of time frame in terms of like how long it will actually take? Great question. Absolutely, great question. And it's and and I would I would start out and, and Cherie, please jump in. I know you've worked with team, you know, organizations nationally and and even some that have a global reach in terms of this work. So I think there's value there from your response. But I, I would just put in that it is an ongoing. Um, and developing the competence. And so as we move to the right on that continuum, we're going to discover dimensions that we hadn't addressed before. There's going to be knowledge of ourselves as we've moved through the process, lessons we've learned as we've moved through the process that we're able to change. So it is, it is a journey in terms of the, the work that we do. It's, you know, it's, it's months and years, not weeks and months, I would say, as a, as a general guideline there. But it is going to be an ongoing process, and as people become more sophisticated in cultural difference, our need to be that much more uh, prepared in that area is going to matter. So what worked using the pictures that are up here for Plan to Win, what worked on the high school level in terms of preparation won't be enough on the college level, and what worked on the college level won't be enough for the pro level. So Shuri, I'll send that over to you. So I, I love that analogy because what's happening, though, is at each of those levels, you're building muscle. And it allows you to be even more prepared as you go to the next level. And so in this space of cultural competence, sometimes I say part of the, the acknowledgement is being okay saying, I may never know every single thing there is to know, but I've gotten to this comfortable place of how I'm going to continue my learning journey and because that really is what it is it's a learning journey and I personally put for myself milestones I, I build goals that say here's where I want to be at a given point in time and I use that as a way of continuing and enhancing uh, the cultural competence so what I'd like to talk about is you know kind of great coaches you know great coaches can take theirs and beat yours or they can take yours and beat theirs and you want to be the kind of coach who brings value because of your ability to see talent and to take them to performance levels that are even beyond their own expectations now that's great for others but then I also hear people say where's my coach and at KG we have a rich understanding of the marketplace and our goal is to help support your efforts as the dynamic coach who leads your organization to success. Those of you who see yourselves uh, ahead of where the organization is, what a great opportunity to serve as a change catalyst to really help unleash the potential of those individuals within your organization to build that kind of internal capability that makes you a, a critical leader in the marketplace. So our focus is on building individual and organizational muscle in that off season so that you're uniquely prepared to win on game day. 
And we do that through our dedicated IDI, Intercultural Development Inventory. It's a practice that allows you to assess and build cultural competence at the individual, the team, and organizational level. But we also have tailored solutions that focus on team building and building those inclusive and high performance winning teams. Now today we're offering the IDI assessment for the first five individuals who claim them and in addition any organization that completes the webinar survey will be available to provide for you a 30-minute consultation to evaluate your current efforts and to give you some insights and thoughts about next steps on your journey. So you see here, we, we're talking about claiming them. How do you do that? You would want to contact Kevin uh, Murphy, who's been kind enough to, to bring us the questions today and to be interacting uh, with you as the webinar has been going on. And those who reach out to, to Kevin, those first five would be those who would be able to claim. But also, please reach out if you have further questions, if you'd like to talk to us about uh, about cultural competence in general, about our IDI and the uh, assessment, about the offerings that go along with it. We'd love to hear from you and answer any questions that you might have. You can also be in touch with us uh, on Facebook, as you see here, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter as well. And I will say in particular that I, I've enjoyed following KG myself in terms of Twitter and getting those words of wisdom from Doug Harris, our CEO from time to time, as well as from our other thought leaders. So uh, inviting you and encouraging you to do that. We'd like to then say game on. A special <laughs> thank you to each of you for participating with us today. Barbara for your support and polling. Kevin for your handling of our questions, to all of our tech support, and a special thank you to you, Orlando, for being a great thought partner on this. Well, the, the feeling is mutual, so thanks, and uh, look forward to continuing the conversation. Great. Looking forward to it. Thank you, everyone, and we hope you'll uh, complete the survey when you exit the webinar today, and we thank you for your time and participation. Have a great day.